Vice City 1.5 is finally here and it's packed with the new features that will take your workflow to the next level. We have introduced smarter road systems that handle intersections more intelligent. Also added a new features for highways and its bridges and brought six new features to the export system that will streamline your pipeline. On top of that, we have added two new block types, green areas and parking to add more variety to your cities. Also, we have added a bunch of procedural towers to the system. I am Hudayf Asmir and in this video, I will guide you through all the new features. So let's start. In ICT 1.5, I will first of all mention the start with settings presets feature. This will give you the ability to choose that if you want the presets and the assets and the imperfections already made in the scene or you don't want it. We still can add them later. I will click start. Now since we have our basic block, I will go to the light mode to enhance the performance and I'll go to the edit city and I will delete this edge by clicking X and delete its vertices. I'll be left over with this edge to start modeling with it. Before I start modeling, I will add the reference image. I will add the image as mesh plane. Now I want to scale it up a little bit and then I will enable the texturing in the viewport shading. I will move it down a little bit so I can see better the roads. Now I want to match the scale with my reference. Now I will measure the distance between two points. To increase the accuracy, I suggest you select two points that are decently far from each other. Here we have the distance is 3 to 6 meters. I'll go back to Blender and try to match that scale out. This is pretty close to the reference. Now I can select this and delete it and go back to edit the city. Now I will move the vertex to the start of the highway and this one here to start sketching out the layout. Here I want to mention the new important feature, which is the highway. We added a whole highway section that has multiple of settings and intersections. And we followed that up with another features that support that feature out like presets for the interchanges, which you can control. And you can also choose the highway shoulder, the custom islands, and you can create a lot of things that we will explain later. Before we start modeling out the highway, you have to consider two things. The highways are always on a higher speed than the normal roads. So it does not have an intersection of 90 degrees. You will always need a smooth transition between the highway and the other road that it connects into. The second thing, it has its own way of shaping. So it does not care too much. And sometimes the road splits into a single direction road, which you can make right now using the one side feature inside the add-on. Now I will keep tracing the highway, holding control and clicking right click on the mouse. I suggest you keeping it light and don't add too much vertices because we can bevel this out later on to have a smoother curvature. For now, I will keep them on the minimum amount of vertices so I have easier intersections and it will be easier to control as well. To assign this as a highway, I will simply select everything and then I will assign this as a highway. I will increase the road count from this slider here into three to match the reference. Now I will make the other road in the same way. I will duplicate this vertex using shift D and I will place it here and I will trace the road using control and right click. I'm trying to match the position of the vertices to be an intersection with another road. This might be so useful to make it easier to extrude the vertices until I reach the certain roads that I want to extrude into. We can use the Blender basic modeling tools. For example, I can select this edge and scale it on the Y axis at zero to straight it out. To fill between two vertices, I need to select them both and click F on the keyboard. I will decrease the sidewalk width to match the scene more by going to the street section and going to the edge selection mode. So I can change that out to be 1.2 meters. To add a vertex on a certain edge, I will click Ctrl R that will add me a vertex in the middle of it. Then I can slide it using double G. 
and then I can fill these out. I will repeat the same process, G two times, slide it on the edge, and then I can extrude that also. For now, I'm happy with the basic roads that I have here. I'll start creating the intersection between the highway and the normal roads. I will start with this area here. I want to slide this vertex to be in the position where I want the intersection to be. And I will move this vertex also to replicate the shape more. I will start extruding this and I will fill it out. As you can see here, everything got messed up in two ways. The first thing, everything now is assigned as a highway and it has three road lanes count because everything drawn here does not have any actual attribute that I added to it. So it will read that attribute from the nearest connected edge. So I need to reassign everything else other than the highway as a normal road and I need to assign the right width for it. I selected the highway and I will assign that as a highway and then I will invert the selection using control and I. I will assign this as a road and I will assign the lanes count to be one. Now everything is set back. I want to control continue creating the interchange. I want this to be one lane and I want it to be one side only. Everything got messed up again so I need to assign everything as two way. I will select this segment and then assign it as a one side and then I will invert the selection using control I and I will assign it as two sides. Here we go everything got fixed up again. Don't forget that we can bevel the vertices out later to have a smoother shape but now I will keep it as is for better control. I'll start creating this one also. To select the whole segment, I'm holding control and left click. I'm doing that again to select also this one. I will repeat that process here. Now I want to give the highway the height it needs. I will move this up for 5.5 meters. But as you can see, that might cause some issues because of the height connectivity. So I will use the proportional editing with connected only, and then I will move it up by scrolling the wheel of the mouse that will make it affect the points. So it has smooth transition. I will exit the light mode so I can so I can see better the result that I'm having right now. Everything looks fine. The intersection between the highway and the sidewalk is fine. Everything looks amazing so far right now. I'll go to the light mode and enable edit city again. Now I will start adding the rest of the road parameters. I forgot to create this segment, so I will create it pretty quickly. Now I will start creating the blocks. For that, I need to select an edge loop and I will click F. If it needs an extra edge, that will automatically be generated. But as you can see here, this edge here does not exist in the real world. So we don't want that as a road. We have an option for that called remove road. This might cause some issues. So at this point, I will assign everything as a road and then I will remove only the edges that I don't want. So I will invert the selection and will assign everything as a road. Now, now I'm ready to fill the, these gaps out. This part might be tricky for you because we have two levels that we want to fill between. You can do that on a multiple ways. You can fill out the whole area and let the system dodge the highway. And then I will go out the light mode and that will automatically dodge the highway. I'll go back to the light mode and continue. For faster performance, I can go to the block and disable the grid block from the viewport. We have added this feature for all the block types, as you can see here, to maintain better performance. 
I will repeat the same process of the other side here. I will fill out these two and I will fill out the block. Let's check out if everything working fine. But I want to delete the two, the two edges here. We can exit the light mode to check perfectly that everything is working fine. Filling this area out might be so difficult, so we will add supportive cuts to support generating the block. I will add a vertex here, I will slide it to this side and I will fill it out with this vertex. I will repeat the same process here, now I will fill these out. I don't want to fill this area so I will ignore it and select this loop and fill out everything. It's okay to have an extra edge inside the face. The system will automatically dodge it out. But here I need to remove the extra edge that just got added. As you can see, everything is working fine. This again might be tricky, so I will add an edge beneath the highway so I can separate the two parts. I will move this beneath the road so it gets trimmed easily. I'll do the same process here. Here I want to fill this with this vertex and close the loop. We have to check if we still having that issue when we go out the light mode. Everything is working fine when I exit the light mode so I will ignore that issue. I think I changed my mind. I will delete this edge, I will remove this road and I want to add a vertex here. So I will right click and subdivide. I'll slide it a little bit. Now I will fill this out like this. I think this is much better but I need to remove this again. Yeah, this is filling everything up better. We will start modeling this area. It does has an actual road here that I missed out, so I just added it. Now since I have filled up almost everything, I will select my reference and go to the object section go to the viewport display and I will keep that in front because I want to assign everything to what it is. I'll go to the blocks and assign this as a terrace and just for fun I will change this into being a parking and I will assign this as a green area. I will disable the in front option to see what's happening. I will disable also the light mode so I can see better. Yeah, everything is looking amazing so far. I will continue to generate the leftovers here. We have added a new feature called Terrain. We can select an edge loop like this one here and then I will click Generate Terrain. As you can see here, now I have this terrain that will automatically be transferred into edit mode where can I move the vertices freely. I can simply use the proportional editing to modify the location. Or we can go to the Sculpt mode to do that also. Inside of it, we can also add a plane and scale it up and start modeling it out. Don't forget that you can turn that off to modify the geometry freely and use the sculpting tools like the dynamic topology to add more density to the mesh. I will mention also a new important feature that we just added to the grid block. Now we have added building spacings to the grid block. Decreasing it out will decrease the spacing between each between the buildings. And if you go too low, the buildings will seem connected. I will leave that at 7 right now to match the density and the reference. And I will also decrease the height of some of the blocks. I want also to turn this into a tower. I can simply assign this as a tower. I can choose also from the new types. I will exit the light mode to check out how everything is looking now. I will check also the render. For the lighting, I will go with a very basic lighting, like a sky texture.
I will edit the culling because I want the instances everywhere in this scene. Once everything is in the box, now I can deactivate the light mode and exit the edit culling to check out my assets. Now I want to edit some things in the, in the road. We have to delete these kind of crosswalks. At the beginning, I will remove the traffic lights. And then I will reselect the intersections on the large roads. And click remove crosswalk. And now in the materials section, we added the road markings. You can control them now easily. You can also add custom road paints if you want to by clicking edit. I will add a plane here. I can select a specific vertex and add the fillet attribute into it. That would be much easier to control if you want to edit that out. We can control the bevel amount. Now I can select the whole thing and change its color. I will reset it back to white and I will also rotate its shape. If we extruded this vertex, what we'll be left with is a line that we can transfer into a dashed line if we want to and we can scale that up and down, we can also give it an, another thickness, as you can see here. With this way, you can customize more the road and how it looks. And if you go to the road options and then the highway options, you will see a new section here for adding custom islands. I will go edit and I will add a plane. I will shape it freely and this will be an island. We can shape that out as we want. We can select it and make it green and that will also work. We can select the tree that we want. We can turn it, turn that off and everything will be working fine. I will remove this right now because this does not make any sense. I think I'm happy now with this scene, so I will keep it like that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or any other ideas or feedback, we would love to hear from you through our community server. It's full with passionate artists and other ICT users who can help you and inspire you on your future projects. And all of our technical team can help you there through all your issues and problems. We are constantly improving ICT based on your feedback. So your suggestions shape the future of ICT. We are currently also working on a dedicated tutorial of how to export from ICT to Unreal workflow. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that update or any other update. If you liked this video, leave a like below and see you in the next one.